All right, so let, let's figure out for this canola oil dipping bowl, uh, let's figure out what temperature the oil and the bowl get to after you pull the oil, or the bowl, excuse me, down from the attic. It must have been a very cold attic, negative four um, degrees Celsius. Uh, so that's what temperature the bowl starts out, and the oil starts out with an initial temperature of 73 degrees C. What we want to do is try to figure out uh, what temperature the two get to, and I think a uh, second question we'll answer because it was brought up out here is, uh, would it be okay for you to use the volume of a complete sphere as opposed to half a sphere like we're doing right now? So I'll try to specifically answer that question as we solve this problem. All right, so what we're gonna do, the kind of the big picture of this is we are going to take the change in internal energy of the silver and add to it the change in internal energy of the oil. And we're going to say that that total change in energy is going to be zero. Why do you think it's going to be zero? Okay. Yeah, it kind of has to do, some of you I think might be saying something like this, but it says um, that a negligible amount of heat is transferred to the surroundings, right? That means that we're going to assume, even though you know this never happens completely, but we'll just say a negligible amount, meaning we can assume it's zero, gets moved out of the system. So any changes in internal energy has to happen through the change in temperature of the oil and the change in temperature of the silver. Okay. So what's our basic equation that we use for a change in internal energy based on temperature change? Okay. MC delta T, I think I heard someone say. So delta E is equal to the mass of something that, that is changing temperature times C sub P, which is the uh, you know, specific heat of the material that is changing temperature. And then delta T um, as the change in temperature. Okay, so we're gonna do that for the silver and for the oil. It's going to be set equal to zero. What, how do we get these M's for the silver and for the oil? Okay. Volume times density gives you mass, right? And so let's kind of do that, I guess, first for the oil. Okay. The mass of oil that we should have here is based on the volume of oil. How do I find the volume of oil? four-thirds, okay, but only half of that, right? So maybe I put a two down here as well. So four over two times three, right, times what? Pi, then what? R cubed, okay, um, and what is R? Okay, A is the diameter, right, nine centimeters, to get R, we divide that by 2, and I take all of that and cube it, right? But I, right now, all I've done is I've made an expression for volume for a half sphere of oil. What do I need to do to get mass? Okay, I need to take this and multiply by the density. What is the density of canola oil, which is delicious on bread? 0.915. Units on that are grams per cubic centimeter. Do you feel like that's the best uh, type of unit that I might want? Okay. Look over here for specific heat for that oil. It's in terms of kilogram degree C. Right? So what else do you think I might want to do for this? I might want to multiply by a kilogram per 1,000 grams. Just another way to write the, the number one. Okay. You can always multiply by number one and it doesn't change the value. All right. So that gives me my mass of oil. Okay. 
And let me just leave that alone for just a second. How do I get, before I you know, calculate it or anything like that, how do I get my mass of um, silver? Okay, and I can do that. Someone says take the volume of the outer sphere and subtract the volume of the inner sphere. You might notice there's a common factor of 4 pi over 2 times 3. And then all I need to do is take that outer radius and cube it and subtract the inner radius and cube it. Okay. Essentially, I took out that common factor of 4 pi over 2 times 3 and uh, just dealt with the subtraction for just those radius cubed terms. Okay. Then what? Okay, multiply this times the density. The density for the silver is 10.52 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, and what else do you think we might want to do, just like the first one? Okay, divide by 1,000, basically multiply by a kilogram per 1,000 grams. Okay, now, if I double the amount of mass and I have everything else the same, same temperature change, same uh, specific heat, but I double the amount of mass, what does that do to my internal energy? Could I do that? Okay. So what if I double my amount of mass for each of these? Can I do that? Okay, I multiplied both sides by 2. What does that do to my internal energy changes that I have down here? Does it double them? Okay. Great, so it doubled each of those. Now what I want to do is go in this equation and divide through by 2. And we're back. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Because the, the question was, um, hey, I solved this problem and I didn't divide by 2 due to the half sphere question. Right, and I got the same answer. And what I just showed you is that there's a reason why you still get the same answer. It's because by not dividing by 2, you basically doubled the amount of internal energy change that you would have had for each case. But because the expression down here is set equal to 0, you can multiply and divide through by any factor, and it doesn't change the essential nature of the equation. Does that help kind of explain why that's the case? Okay. So now that I've done this, I may as well just go through and do it for double the amount of oil and double the amount of silver, right? And so I actually have that, believe it or not, written in my notes right here. Um, this turns out to be 0.34926 kilograms of oil. 34926 kilograms. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and leave the twos in here so that we're clear, right? Because that's what I'm going to actually write down. Um, and then for the silver, I wind up with 3.316 kilograms. Okay. So this expression down here becomes uh, 0.3, or excuse me, I started with the silver, so I'll do 3.3. Uh, one six kilograms times what? Specific heat, which is 236 joules per kilogram degree C times what? Change in temperature of the silver is based on the final temperature of the silver, which is what we're assuming the top final temperature is of everything. So I'll just call it T sub F. 
minus the initial temperature of the silver, and the initial temperature of the silver was negative 4 degrees C. Okay. Then I need to take the amount of uh, energy change in, you know, the oil, or actually double the amount of energy change in the oil. Um, and so to get that, we get 0.34926 kilograms times the specific heat of the oil, which is 1,913 joules per kilogram degree C. And this is going to be multiplied by the final temperature of everything minus the initial temperature of the oil, which was 73 degrees C. Okay. And that whole expression I set equal to zero. All right. Now let me show you this because some of you may not how to know how to use your calculator in this way. And some of you might look at that and go, man, I've got to do some factoring and stuff. Uh, some expansion and factoring, and it's just a big old mess. Let me show you, you don't have to do that. Once you have this expression written, uh, you can use your calculator and type in that expression just how it is. So we can do a 3.316 uh, times 236 times. We do need a variable for this variable we're trying to solve for, which I'll use x minus a minus 4, okay, plus 0.34926 uh, times 1913 uh, times, and then here we again use that variable x minus 73, okay. Here's one of the only tricky keystrokes here is you need an equal sign. You don't get an equal sign by hitting the equals key. You need to get the equal sign that's above the calc key right here if you're using the Casio. To get that, you hit alpha, and that puts in the equal sign. You set it equal to zero by doing that, and then you uh, to solve, again, you don't actually hit the equal sign yet to solve. What you have to do is you have to hit shift because above the calc key again there, you see the word solve. So you hit shift. Now it asks you, is this the variable you want to solve for? Yes, it is. And if it is, you just hit equals. Um, and it gives you a number there, 31.463 degrees C. And so you would answer G.